Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to our final week of question and answers about baptism of the Holy Spirit. My wonderful husband Patrick is joining us again for Hello. this last week. And um, we've spent the last several weeks, probably the last four or five, we've talked about um, who the Holy Spirit is. We've talked about um, the baptism in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's role in your life. And then we ended up talking about um, speaking in tongues. And based on those teachings, we had lots of questions about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So that's what we've been doing for the mm -hmm. last couple weeks is answering those questions. So we are on our final week and our final four questions this week. Um, and you got anything to add before we get started? No, I sure don't. Okay, well, let's just jump right in then. Okay, so question one um, asks, is there a specific prayer I should say to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and a sp specific prayer, well, that's a tongue twister, um, to speak in tongues. So the answer is no, you don't have to have a specific or a separate prayer for the baptism of the Holy Spirit and then to, to be filled and then to speak in tongues. So I've been going back to Luke 13, Luke 11, 13 every week. You probably have this memorized by now, but I'm going to read it again anyway. Um, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to him who asks? All you have to do is ask for the Holy Spirit, and he will be given to you. You don't need a specific prayer. You can say something as simple as, Father, fill me with the Holy Spirit. You don't need a specific prayer. You need a specific heart. You need a heart that is open to believe and to receive and then to step out in faith. So once you've been baptized, you have him in you and your prayer language is available to you. And I think an important thing about that is that when we ask, in order to receive, we receive by faith. Mm -hmm. uh, when I prayed, it's, uh, Lord, right now I receive by faith uh, your Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so it's important, as uh, Mark 11, 24, uh, if you ask, believe that you receive and you shall have it. Mm -hmm. Or when we receive our salvation, it's a gift of God. It's a gift that God gives us by mm -hmm. his grace, but we, we believe. Yep. We have faith in it, and therefore we receive it. This is how we receive things of God, right. by faith. Yep. We walk by faith and not by sight. That's right. So. so the simple answer to that question is, no, there is not a specific prayer, and there is not a separate prayer. Once you ask, you have him, and you have your prayer language. Ready for two? Ready for two. Question number two. So many Christians speak about a tangible feeling they get when they receive the bap uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit, how different they felt after, how things changed for them after that event, or how much clearer, more meaningful scripture became uh, for them after that event. Uh, I know we walk by faith. Uh, the, asker, or the person who asks this question says, I know we walk by faith and not by sight or feelings. But when so many Christians talk about how dramatic mm -hmm. the filling of the Holy Spirit was for them, why do some of us not experience any of that? And if we don't, are we not really filled with the Holy Spirit? Well, uh, first of all, let's address the first thing. I think the, uh, or I, I know the, the person who asked this question is correct when they say we walk by faith and not by sight. So we're not supposed to live by our five senses. We're not supposed to live by our feelings. Mm -hmm. So. The word says that if we, we ask for something, we have not because we ask not. So we have to ask for the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So we ask, therefore we receive, and we have faith in it. So Father is faithful to give us what we ask for if we believe that we receive, according to Mark eleven twenty four. There's some other scriptures, James 4 and a couple others. And uh, so we don't live by our five senses. We don't walk by faith. Um, we do walk by faith. <clears throat> reverse that. <laughs> we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. Right. <laughs> so reverse that. Um, but they're, they're correct in that instance. So far as a tangible feeling, um, or you get goosebumps up and down your spine, or mm -hmm. you feel like you're filled with fire or something else. Um, my personal opinion is that, you know what, if, if the Lord blesses you, like if you're in praise and worship or something, and you get that tangible, physical feeling, uh, that the Lord will give you a feeling of love or a feeling of 
heaviness or whatever whatever that happens to you if that if Lord gives you that you know be thankful for it and move on but that being said uh, we don't have to mm -hmm. have that feeling right. again if we walk by faith and mm -hmm. not by sight <laughs> um, so we don't have to have that feeling uh, because that's part of our soul our, our five senses mm -hmm. and so um, you know what? He's faithful. If you ask, you believe, and you receive, he's faithful mm -hmm. to give it to us. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, John the Baptist when he's in prison. Uh, he asks Jesus, or he asks the disciples, or he sends his disciples to Jesus, mm -hmm. and they said, are you the one, are you the Messiah? Are you the one that we should be looking for? But Jesus doesn't go back and, you know, we've heard this before, you might have heard this, that uh, Jesus doesn't tell come and give him a hug and say, it's gonna be okay, John, everything else. What does Jesus do? Jesus re refers him to the word. Mm -hmm. And John the Baptist, John knew the word. Right. Uh, Jesus says, uh, I'm paraphrasing, Jesus, uh, tell John that the blind are receiving their sight, the lame are walking, and things are happening, there's mm -hmm. miracles being done. Mm -hmm. And John will know the word, and he'll know from right. uh, the scriptures that this is the Messiah. So Jesus referred him to the word, he didn't, uh, give him a pat on the back and say it's going to be okay, John. Give mm -hmm. him a hug. He wants us to stand on the word. Right. He doesn't. He doesn't want us to stand on our feelings or right. anything else. We need. There's going to come a time when we. You have to choose to stand on what the word says, mm -hmm. no matter what our five senses tell us, no matter what the circumstance around us, circumstances around us. We know that the word is truth, mm -hmm. and we have to make a choice to stand on that word. So. Again, if the Lord gives you a feeling, hey, praise God. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't, then know that you, if you believed and you received, or you believe that you received, then you shall have it. Mm -hmm. you know? So what's, what's the word then? The word is, what did we just go over? Luke eleven thirteen. that if you, that, that he will give the Holy Spirit to them who ask. So if you ask to be baptized, feel it or not, you have been filled with the Holy Spirit. And at that point, you rely on that word by faith and not by anything natural, not by feelings, not by, um, you don't you don't need those natural feelings to confirm the word that you know. I guess I had a really long explanation or answer to that one. And I still, actually still got one more. Um, as far as uh, things that happen after you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, uh, to me, what was the part of the question? So the part of the question was um, talking about how different they felt after the baptism of the Holy Spirit, how things changed for them after that event, or how much more meaningful, more clear scripture became. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened to me. Um, after the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I started receiving more revelation, and things just started happening in my life. And I always say that uh, my life went from... Um, 10 miles an hour to 100 miles an hour without me even trying, it just happened. And my personal uh, opinion is is that uh, you can base that on the scriptures, it said, uh, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. It says in Psalms, uh, taste and see that the Lord is good. To me, if you make a, a direct or a decision to move toward God, that you, okay, you're already saved, mm -hmm. you already uh, have salvation well I want more I want a deeper relationship with the Lord mm -hmm. so if you make a direct move toward God Bible says draw near to God and he'll draw near to you that he honors this right you know he honors your seeking him out your wanting more of him more wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him mm -hmm. it's in that knowledge of him uh, that you know grace and peace are multiplied mm -hmm. in a knowledge mm -hmm. so it's it's in that decision to move toward God that he honors and it's just a, a deepening of the relationship and mm -hmm. therefore things did happen for me after I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. like I said more more revelation on things I understood scripture better mm -hmm. uh, things in my life just start happening right you know? when I got baptized I was only seven so no feeling no you know not that I remember anyway but those the gifts I didn't operate in until until later as I learned about them and as I learned what the word said about them and it, it it was like it's like learning a new job kind of in a way 
like you go into a job and you might not have to know what to do, but as you work through the job, you you learn how to do things. I kind of feel that way about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that as you walk and as you seek him and as you grow, you learn how to operate. You learn how to receive from the Holy Spirit. Um, you learn you learn how and those things just start to happen they're nothing that you can force to happen it all comes just in like patrick said in the seeking him and and drawing nearer to him and you will experience those things as you you do that whether or not you ever have a tangible feeling you know some people do some people don't but it doesn't mean again that you're not filled with the holy spirit everything flows out of relationship Amen. with him everything That's is right of him, from him, and to him, and it's from that relationship that everything flows out of him. That's right. Okay, question number three. I love this question. Am I making it up when I'm speaking in tongues? I just think it's a great question because this is a question that everybody has when they first start speaking in tongues, where their brain starts saying, you're making that up. I, I bet every person has experienced that feeling. There's that word feeling again. So. Um, I'm going to read a study to you, a short study. It was done in 2006 um, out of the University of Pennsylvania. And what they did was they took five people and had them speak in tongues. And as they were speaking in tongues, they took brain images of them as they were speaking in tongues. And this research was actually published in the New York Times. I thought that was fascinating. And it was led by a researcher. His name was Dr. Andrew Newberg. And I'm gonna read you the conclusion um, because it will answer this question is, uh, am I making it up when I speak in tongues? So this is, this is a direct quote. We noticed a number of changes that occurred functionally in the brain. Our finding of decreased activity in the frontal lobes during the practice of speaking in tongues is fascinating because these subjects truly believe that the Spirit of God is moving through them and controlling them to speak. Our brain imaging research shows us that these subjects are not in control of the usual language centers during this activity, which is consistent with their description of a lack of intentional control while speaking in tongues. When they prayed in tongues, their frontal lobes, or the willful part of the brain we use to think and control what we do, were quiet. The language center of their brains, the part we used to speak in our native language, were quiet as well. The people were not in a trance. They were fully aware of what was happening. The researchers were unable to pinpoint which part of the brain was controlling this behavior of speaking in tongues. Dr. Newberg went on to say, the amazing thing was how the images supported people's interpretation of what was happening. The way they describe it and what they believe is that God is talking through them. I just think it is awesome how science always confirms what it doesn't want to confirm. Um, and when it says the researchers were unable to pinpoint which part of the brain was controlling the speaking in tongues, that's the answer right there. Because 1 Corinthians 14, 14 tells us that it is our spirit that prays. You know, it, it's, our, it's coming from our spirit. It's not coming from our brain, which is why our brain can't explain it. So this is not, speaking in tongues is not a fabricated language. It's not something that you make up. And, and the study kind of confirms that. It is your spiritual language, according to 1 Corinthians 14, 2, that was given to you by God to communicate with him. So the moment you ask for and receive the Holy Spirit, that language is available to you. And as you operate in that, as you speak in tongues in faith, that language will develop. And I think we talked about this before that, you know, sometimes when you first get started, it might just be one syllable, da, 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 da. It might be one thing. Some people get their full, have a full prayer language, you know, right from the, right from the start. So everybody's unique, everybody's different. But the, the one thing that is common to every person is that your brain wants to step in and say, you are making that up. Absolutely. That's not real. That's what happened to me. Yeah. The minute you start speaking in tongues, mm -hmm. your brain says, you just made it up. It's yeah. not real. 
i mean think about it the enemy doesn't want you to do this so he's going to throw everything at you he can you know if this is a vital weapon or a vital tool i relate everything to military analogies if this is a a better tool or weapon that we can use the enemy does not want you to use this yeah so he's going to try and get you to doubt this yeah that's doubt, right. Doubt your doubts. Doubt your doubts. I like that. Yeah, so, no, you're not making it up, but you are making the sounds. You have to You have to speak out sounds in faith and know and believe in faith that those sounds are your language and you are communicating with God. And that, what you just said, is a great lead into our final question. Is, uh, should every believer pray in tongues? We probably haven't had this... We, I don't think we had this question directly in the last mm -hmm. two sessions, but we've basically answered this every it. time. Mm -hmm. um, should every believer pray in tongues? My, my opinion, I think, or I know Teresa agrees with me, absolutely. absolutely. All right, if you have, again, going back to military analogies, if God gives us a tool or a, all right, in the military, if I can have a better weapon to win the battle, I'm assigned to fight. Mm -hmm. In other words, there's a mission. And if I have a better uh, piece of equipment or weapon, that will help me win this battle, you know, and even the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to pulling down the strongholds. So they're spiritual weapons, they're gifts, they're gifts of the Holy Spirit that mm -hmm. we can use to better do what God has called us to do. Mm -hmm. So if I have this weapon, or if I have this tool, I need to know how to use it. Mm -hmm. So without me understanding the... Um, how to use this weapon, the max effective range, the cyclic rate of fire, the um, how to operate this weapon. So without me understanding how to use this, then I'm not going to get the full benefit of it. Right. You know, so it's the same thing for speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. That's why we need to learn about this. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't need to sit there and let um, religion or, or somebody, a mm -hmm. denomination or somebody behind a pulpit say it's of the devil or it's for... Um, or only kooks do this. So if you need to understand, you need to learn and read the word and understand what it's for and how mm -hmm. to use it. And um, you know what? It's just a better tool, a better weapon to help you do what God's called you to do. Mm -hmm. And if there's eternal implications to what God has called us to do for your life, for my life, for your life, mm -hmm. there's eternal implications in what God's called you to do. Mm -hmm. So do it to the best of your ability ability and use what he's offered to give you or he's offered to give you a better tool so you know what um if you if you don't want to speak in tongues because you're you're unsure of it there's apprehension or something you know what? get over it learn about it <laughs> because it's awesome they always say and i'll say this and i'll shut up they say a man with an experience will win out against a man with an argument i have i grew up in a couple different um, forms of religion. I, I've had experiences, and then I've had experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and my experience is it's amazing, it's wonderful, mm -hmm. and it changed my life, mm -hmm. you know. And um, so, you know, it's yeah. my experience, so. Yeah. Take that. <laughs> so. You know, and, and Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14 that he spoke in tongues more than everybody, and in verse 5 in chapter 14, he said, I wish that you all spoke in tongues. So it is for every believer. And it and yes, you you should. And I have that that same experience that, you know, after been being filled with the Holy Spirit and not using it for a large portion of my life, but then finally discovering what it was and, and beginning to use that tool that I had, the peace that comes, the revelation that comes, the, you know, the healing that comes, I mean, everything. So yes, absolutely. I think every born again believer should be baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. You know, one something I, I wanted to say is I, you always hear people say, well, it's, it's of the devil. You don't want to mess with it or anything else. You know, if it's of the devil, why aren't more children of the devil using it? <laughs> you know, That's it, a good point. it just doesn't make sense. Um, so it's it's amazing. It's wonderful. And uh, that's, that's all I got to say. Amen. So. so guys, we are going to end this uh, Q&A on baptism of the Holy Spirit. 
And um, I hope you have been blessed. I hope we have given you answers that um, you, can, you can run with. And as I said at the end of the last one, if you aren't baptized in the Holy Spirit, then get baptized in the Holy Spirit and, um, um, and go from there. So if you have any more questions, guys, um, please leave them in the comments below. And I will personally get to you and answer those questions. But... Uh, until next time when I believe I'm going to start, we'll go back to a normal, normal session and uh, we'll start talking about spirit, soul and body, uh, mm. which is uh, a good subject. Yeah. Yeah. It's a necessary subject. So, all right, guys, until next time, we'll see you then.